I'm not saying you suck, but your writing might be terrible. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Ian Chaffin, author of a lot of books, or somewhat a lot of books one day. And thinker of things. And today we're going to figure out why you suck at writing. In all honesty, it's not that you suck at writing, it's just that you don't have enough practice in writing. And yes, yes, before before anyone attacks and goes, excuse me, I've been writing for years. It may not be that you actually suck at writing, but you just feel like you do in the moment. Or you could actually be terrible at writing. Now you and I can begin figuring out how and why you suck, and how to make your terrible writing better. So whether you're just in a rut or you're just not good at writing because you haven't practiced enough, these are some tips I have discovered for myself that I'm giving to you that will help improve your writing exponentially. But you have to put in the work, so, so no complaining because they're not like automatic stuff. I can't just grant you the power of writing. If I could do that, I would do it with myself, so yeah. I would have it all for me. Ha 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 ha! Ha! The first thing you do is step zero. Yes, there's like a pre-step to all of this, and that is to breathe. I want you to step away from your writing, not this video, step away from your writing and, and go take a shower, uh, go to the restroom if you haven't done that, go eat if you haven't done that, drink water, no, 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 no coffee, no tea, no high sugary drinks, actual water. Unless you live in a place that water is really, really bad, then try to boil that water first and then cool it down if you can. But besides that, whatever you do, step away from your writing and breathe, okay? I have discovered with my own writing that if I stare at my computer and I'm typing and I'm typing and I'm typing, hopefully actual typing words and not just, you know, my head banging on the computer nonstop. But I realize that if I stare too much at my computer, whether I'm typing or not, I get super tired and I don't even notice it because I get lost in my own mind. So first and foremost, go rest, all right? It's, it's good to rest. Resting is productivity. Even though our society, or at least Western society it seems like, doesn't view resting as productivity, it really is. It's productive that, you know, stuff you don't see until you either don't do it at all or you do too much of it. So step number one, admit it, at least to yourself, that your writing is kind of bad, okay? Some people, and I've, I've, I've met some people like this, where their writing isn't as good as it could be. It's first draft or still in like the outlining process and you can kind of tell and it needs to be improved on. Those same people come up to me after I've read their work and given them my constructive criticism and go, how dare you say that my writing sucks? And which in return I say, well, technically I didn't say it sucks except for in a certain video of mine it could get better. Y'all, it's okay that your writing is terrible. I'll repeat. It's okay that your writing is terrible. I'm pretty sure people like, you know, Michael Jordan and, you know, singers like, singers. I'm pretty sure, you know, all the famous people that you follow in life, because I know you do, because I know you have a Twitter or an Instagram, they didn't start out being like, boom, fabulous. And if they did, you didn't actually see the background work. You know the whole story about Cinderella? Yeah, everyone saw was when she was in the castle. No one saw was when she was being traumatized and tortured by her evil stepmother. Just saying. In order for a coal to become a diamond, it has to be put under heat and pressure, okay? So I want you to admit to yourself, hey, my writing isn't as good as it could be. You don't have to admit it to anyone else. You don't have to, like, go out into Times Square and shout it, even though if you do, people would probably record you or think you're weird. But you do need to admit it to yourself that your writing can be better. You don't have to use the word suck or have the word terrible. Look at a mirror and look at yourself straight in the eye and say, my writing can be better. Which goes into our next step, having an open and growth mindset. While you're looking at yourself in the mirror saying, my writing can be better, you also need to tell yourself, and it can be better. It's possible 
that it can be better and I can work to make it better. A lot of times I see people who, you know, finally realize that their writing needs to be improved and they just sit there and go, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I'm the most worst person ever. To which I say, it's not most worst. It's just worst. But also these people are missing a vital, vital step. You need to have that open and growth mindset where it's okay to fail because you can get better. If you think that you were born with only a limited amount of space for things, shut up. Get rid of that thought right now. Even if you have to tell yourself every single day, I can improve, I'm smarter than I think, I'm braver than I am, I'm a lot prettier than I am. Yes, do it. If it gets you into that mindset, definitely, because that will help you way more than anything else I can ever tell you and way more than anyone else could ever tell you in, in a writing book, on here on YouTube or anything like that. You have to have that open mindset. You have to admit to yourself that you can grow and get better because if not, you're just going to get stuck. You might improve a little bit, but you're going to get stuck and you're going to stay stuck and that's no bueno, which also rolls into the third point. You need to be open to new things. There are always new things you can learn. Whether or not you actually use them, it's still good to learn about them. And what do I mean by that? Well, again, I have met a few people who are like, oh, I don't need to read this book to learn new things. I already know everything in there. And which I say, oh, really? So you, you know everything in there, so you've read it. And then, of course, they go, no, I just know what it's going to say. Even if a book is like that and you read through it or skim through it or whatever and you're like, wow, this writing book has everything I already know in it. It's always good to check. All right. All right. Don't don't be like, ooh, I know everything. I actually have this little problem. It, it happens every now and then. I'll be like going on Pinterest and being like, five new ways to make a character talk. And I'm like, I already know that. And then I stop and I go, wait. I need to actually think about this. So I click on it, you know, check it. Maybe it's legit, maybe it's not. And surprisingly, I still find things on Pinterest that I need to learn, so, about writing. So not only do you need to open your mind to be ready to learn new things, you need to remember you don't know everything, and that's okay. So the fourth step is read how-to books and watch how-to videos. And, and do how to anything. You know, I've mentioned the fantasy fiction formula by Deborah Chester. That's a good one to start out with, especially if you're gonna do fantasy or even sci-fi, I'm just saying. People love Saves the Cat, Write the Novel by Brody. Um, I'm actually halfway through that. I need to actually finish it. And there are so many more, even ones about editing, which I'm currently reading one, which I can't find. It's probably in a thing somewhere. But yes, go to your local library, Go to Barnes & Noble if you have some monies and pick out some books that are like, hey, how to write, how to create characters, how to do this. Definitely, definitely do that. And hey, if you don't have money but you still have an internet connection because of course you're watching this video so you should have some kind of connection, watch YouTube videos, watch how-to videos. I'm putting more and more up on this channel and there's a lot of other people who are really, really great. Um, heart breathings. Vivian Reese, Kim Chance, a lot more. There's a ton. There's a ton of people. All right, just just how to write a book. Boom, there you go. There are also websites too, like the Better Novel Project, which I, I love, by the way. I visited there so many times and a couple others. Step five, read books in your genre. What do you like about them? What do you hate about them? What are some interesting things you see in them? So for me, I read a lot of the young adult novels. Why? Because I want to write in the young adult area. Now, do I go out and steal things? No. No, I do not. But I do get inspiration from a lot of people who have done this before me. And of course, I usually stay towards the fantasy sci-fi area of young adult because a lot of the young adult romance makes me kind of peek a little. I'm just saying, y'all need to come up with like better getting together stories because the whole, oh, he looked at me and I looked at him and she looked at me and I looked at me. That's stupid. Of course, I can't say much because I have read fantasy novels that have a lot of that in there. So <laughs> whoops. But yes, go read books in your genre. If you want to write a nonfiction self-help book, guess what you need to do? If you want to write a fantasy series, guess what you need to do? Think about your target audience. Think about like, 
the genre and all of that and go find some books and read them. Or if you're like me, go listen to some audiobooks and all that. There's stuff like Libby and Hoopla Digital that can actually really, really help you read those for free because, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm not a bestseller yet, yet. And of course, this leads us to our sixth point, read books outside of your genre. <gasps> what? Reading books outside of your genre? It's almost like, like, you need to expand your horizons. Since I travel to random places for my work Monday through Friday, I'm usually listening to audiobooks. I know I've told you all this, but yeah, it's true. And because of that, I tend to find a lot of weird, cool things. Um, I just got done with one that was basically a middle school novel, and it was, it was great. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was one of the best books I've ever read, and it's a middle school book, let me tell you. But not only that, you have books that you know, may, like, inspire something about your story. Maybe it's not the whole book. Maybe it's, like, this one point. Like, for example, um, you have a tough scene to go through and you don't know exactly how to do it. And then, of course, you know, you're trying to think of ideas while you're listening to this really cool crime mystery. And you're like, oh, wait, this thing in this book. Oh, my gosh, that's such an, a cool idea. I should do it in my book. But, of course, tweak it where it's, it's my, you know, about my book and not about their book. It's not stealing the words. It's using that idea, you know. Kind of like the Cape of Invisibility or whatever it's called from Harry Potter. Yeah, that's been used in a crap ton of anime. Which you can also apply this point to, you know, different movies outside of your genre, different TV series outside of your genre. And technically you can apply that to the last point as well, you know, watching stuff inside your genre and then watching stuff outside your genre. Yeah, totally do it. And so after you've done all that exploring into how-tos and YouTubes and, and you know, all the genres and all the medias and all that, we come to our seventh point of actually writing. You're going to sit down and you're going to write. But don't write a whole book. No, 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 no. You're going to try out things that you've learned from all this other stuff by writing flash fiction, short stories, and or excerpts from your book or a potential book. You see, writing in short little bits actually helps you try out new things. This is way better than being like, okay, I learned a lot of things. Now I'm ready to write. And you're going to write that new book, whether you're a pantser or a plotter or a planter or a plotzer or whatever they call them. And you dive right in and then you're just stuck. Why? Because you didn't try it out. And that's like going somewhere, buying a random shirt and not even trying it on. This is like, seriously? This Really? Really? Oh, but it's in my size. Yes, but you get it from the mall, so it's probably two sizes too small anyways. Let's be real. You need to try all these little bits out, little things that you just learned out. And the best way to do that is by doing it in tiny, tiny bits. My advice is figure out what you're trying to do and how it might fit into like flash fiction, short stories, or an excerpt. For example, you could be trying to do character description. So, you know, maybe even writing a little description bit will help you. Or, you know, maybe even taking the excerpt of when that character first shows up in your book and applying it to that and be like, hmm, does this work? Does this not work? Or maybe you're trying to figure out how to do really nice dialogue. So maybe a flash fiction or a short story would work best with that. The best thing about all of this is that you can keep it in universe. So if you don't want to venture out of the world you created in your book, you don't have to. I've written flash fiction and short stories that have led me to develop new characters for the book series I'm working on. And it's, it, it's pretty great. It's, it's awesome. And side tip, if you think that you have to write every single day to be great, yes, it does help. But you can always take a breather too. And I think that's what a lot of writers miss breathing. It's great that you want to learn. It's great that you want to expand. And it's great that you're learning and expanding. And it's great that you're applying all of this. But remember, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to have a Sabbath day, all right? Even if you don't believe in the Sabbath and why people do it, it's still good to take a siesta. It's still good to, you know, chill out and be like, <sighs> as long as you don't stay there. Remember, the Sabbath day is only one day a week, not six or seven days a week. So here's where we go on to the eighth point, which is ask people for help. 
Yes, I said it. So after you've written your tidbits, your short stories, your flash fiction, excerpts, whatever it is, take that and ask a person to look over it. It would be great if this person is in that target audience of yours. You know, for me, it'd be a young adult who really likes reading or especially a person who understands writing. You want someone who, who kind of gets writing, whether they've read a lot of books and they want to be a beta reader because they love to help authors out and all that. Maybe another writer, maybe a writer companion. Whether they're online or in person, it's really good to just have somebody there to look over your stuff. Now you might be asking, well, what if I don't have anyone? Well, that's when you go on Facebook groups and try to find someone. Be like, hey, who wants to be in a writing group? And we share writing and see where it goes. Or if you live near a local university, definitely go up there because there's probably some nerds up there wanting to read stuff. Or if worse comes to worse, find an editor. Just ask the editor, hey, I have some stuff, you know, could you charge me like not so much to actually read it? Or if they're a new editor, you might ask, hey, you need some practice and I need some practice. We can help each other out. Or even finding a librarian who really wants to help you out. And you might even be able to help them improve their writing as well. But whatever you do, try to find someone that you're like, oh, hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Don't be afraid of people stealing your work and don't be afraid of like people seeing your work because you're never going to get better if you're the only one that thinks your work is great. And another side tip, if you're worried about like, if you're both really, really like noobs at this, don't worry. Play off of each other, work with each other and all that, and you can both improve with each other. So, you know, don't be afraid to do that either. And the ninth and final tip, remember. Remember that you and every writer, every author who actually cares, who actually wants their work to be worth it is trying to improve. It's okay if you hit dead ends. It's okay that, you know, you're not that good yet, but that's the point, yet. The only way you're going to get truly stuck and never move on is if you don't try to improve. And yes, there are people who have a talent for writing out there, and that's really cool, but you know that if they don't try to improve themselves, that talent's gonna go to waste. So yeah, even they have to work for it. So no matter what, keep going. Keep moving, keep learning, keep trying new things. And sooner or later, you're going to come up with a great story and write it and be like, wow, that feels good. So don't worry, it happens to everyone. Even if you find someone that you think is better than you, so they might not be better than you. They might just be, you know, further along in their journey. Just don't think that either you're going to be the best or you're not going to be at all. Because in all honesty, if you're like that, well, it's going to be that second option. You're not going to get anywhere. And I'm not trying to be mean, just very truthful. So either you try and you work hard or you're just not going to be at all, so. So without further ado, I hope my tips have helped you, helped you start thinking about the future and all that. If you liked it, please tell me down in the comments. I love reading when people are like, oh, I understand now. Or if you have other tips, that would be great to hear too. I would love to know. And I'll see you all later, alligators. Bye-bye.